The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 340 Mechanical Aptitude The lights in Ermbai's basement clicked on as the party of mares descended, starlight bringing up the rear. Rows of ceiling-high shelves obfuscated the area just as much as she had remembered, and she suddenly worried that packing that many ponies into a, such a cramped space might not be a good idea. She quickly found herself sandwiched tightly between white chocolate and a wall as they reached the teleporter area, Valet swimming to take up less space and Amber riding lazily on Willow's back. Maple stood alone, jam jars was lurking, and Shinespark was staring breathlessly at the mounds of technology laying around. Okay, Starley decided, noticing no one else was taking charge. Shinespark, once you find what you came for, we can help carry... Shinespark wasn't remotely listening. Where's this his workbench, she murmured, brushing her leg reverently across a small, cleared space on a raised table, with standing room on either side. There's so much I've only heard about here, and even more he never even wrote to me for. Look at this! She actually beamed, shrugging off from melancholy as she held up a carrot-shaped device with wires sticking out of the thick end. Starlight looked around, realizing no one seemed in a hurry to leave, and some even looked curious themselves, and huffed, seating herself in a box to watch. What is it? White Chocolate asked, tail swishing and head turning sideways as she stepped forward. It looks almost like a horn. Shinespark lifted a thing in her aura, putting her hoof back on the table. I don't know! It's either an unusually shaped mana capacitor, or antenna, or some kind of discharge point. Maybe a prototype horn weapon for brain? She kicked over a long gray box with several wire prongs waving from the top, attached several to the carrot-shaped device, and put the other lead to her horn. This is a spectroscope, she quickly explained. Let's see what happens if... When a horn lit, the metal carrot instantly whirred and began rotating at high speed. The spectroscope, meanwhile, glowed blue and started to play a static -y recording of someone playing a violin. Uh, Shinespark blushed and turned him out. Okay, so it's a drill and that's not a spectroscope. Oh, here's a bit of timing crystals right next to a series of rapid discharge capacitors. I wonder what he was making with this. This reminds me of my father's workroom, White Chocolate murmured, looking up and down a wall of shelves. Only so many more things. She gently bit the edge of a bin and slid it out, peering inside. I know these. They're soldering crystals for mana circuitry. But I remember them being so much smaller. Soldering crystals? Shinespark's ears perked and she flew over the desk in a cloud of blue magic, landing right next to white chocolate. Let me see those. Wow, these are enormous. One step below the kind they use for power grid work. We'll need these for the ship for sure. She pulled her nose back out of the bin, stepping back and glancing at White Chocolate appreciatively. You have experience with this stuff? White Chocolate looked at her hooves. I used to watch my father. I don't have a horn, so I couldn't... Shantra grabbed something and floated it near her mouth so she could grab it, accidentally overshooting and bumping her on the nose. Standard issue mouth bit, she said, offering the piece with a wiggle. Also, some tools for the last 15 years have been made with at least some version of compatibility for them, and I see a bit of adapters right there. You'll need a mana core for power, for testing, and better workspace management to keep a clear area, but as long as you've got good motor control in your neck and teeth, being hornless shouldn't be an issue. There's no need to let what you're born as define what you can or can't do. White Chocolate sat down heavily, looking stunned. Fifteen years, she whispered, as the mouth bit hovered in front of her eyes. You didn't know that? Shinespark smiled gently, sending Starlight's mind spinning, trying to reconcile her with a sad, brooding mare who had dwelt in and cleaned the airship for the last several days. I'd put a half on your shoulder, but I have a cold right now. I really did need to get out more, White Chocolate puffed, breathing heavily. I never even thought. Shinespark waited for her to continue, checking several more bins along the shelf, and finished for her. Thought you'd be good for anything? Felt like you had a future stolen? Oh, here's some smaller ones, if they're the size you're used to. A lot of snow since fell that way. Good news now is, with the amount of rebuilding that needs to be done, anyone with talent... She pulled out another bin with her teeth, horn already juggling several floating objects. Yes, here's the back of soldering us. Anyone with talent can be useful. And I've seen ponies bring themselves back from situations even you wouldn't believe. Be useful? White Chocolate shook her head, gingerly taking the bit and talking around it with bare teeth. I just thought I'd never get to enjoy this again. 
for Tlaib and everything here. She wiped the corner of her eye. I feel like my past is catching up to me in a good way. Maple appeared by her side, nudging her shoulder. See? She grinned hopefully. I told you things can get better. White chocolate slumped, leaning against her, still looking as if she didn't quite believe it. Hey, look what I found, Emma crowed, interrupting, legs flopping in excitement from atop Willow's back. She held up a silvery object Starlight couldn't quite make out. It's like a metal griffin tower or something, and it's full of wires. Pretty neat for a toy. Shinesprite bounded over to her, frowning. A talon? She took it in her aura, pulling gently at the cables running back into a mass of things in the floor, and ultimately withdrew the entire contraption. It was in several pieces, which she quickly plugged back together, and soon the talon had a cup at the base, the perfect size for Mare's hoof, and several wires tied to a mesh helmet that looked vaguely similar to the Harmony Extractors. This is a mechanical hand, Shinespark said, holding it up and looking impressed. Airboy wrote me a lot about this one. He said he had a finished prototype, and it was going to be incorporated in the next major revision of Brain's armor. The fingers would be able to retract into the metal for durability, but come out and grab things like griffins or dragons can. I wonder if this is the prototype that works. Eagerly, she strapped the hand into place, securing it around her right front hoof with several wrapping bands, then floated a helmet onto her rear and connected a bundle of auxiliary cables to a power supply. Her eyes suddenly constricted, and she looked at the altered hoof with pinprick pupils. Wow, she managed. I can actually feel it, like it's a part of my body. Everyone crowded around in sudden interest as she lifted the attachments, tensed, and it shifted, the digits wrapping around until they were curled closed. This isn't what I was expecting, Shinespark whispered as the mechanical hand continued to move, pivoting around its wrist and flexing one finger at a time. I wonder if I can feel pain, or if I could feel the rest of the armor. This would take a lot of training to get used to. She lifted a helmet from her rump, unstrapping the hand and floating them forward. Now, does anyone else want to try? Amber quickly volunteered. As she twirled the hand around with a combination of consternation and amusement, Starlight's attention wandered, and she quickly found herself staring at the nearby teleported dais still connected to its harmony extractor. In fact, the thing looked like it had been recently turned on. She supposed that was how Ehrenbei got from Riverfall to Iron Ridge in the first place, though how he had powered it was beyond her. Had Shinespark said something about connecting multiple ponies at once, producing unstable power surges? Maybe that would work for a teleportation spell. When she did it, it suddenly felt like a single surge. What would the machine get used for now? Did Shinespark need to take the whole thing to repair her airship? Everybody had said the larger components were fine, so if not, what would it do? Just get left in Riverfall for anyone to use for anything? She doubted there were many ponies who knew how to use it, and it felt somewhere between a waste and a liability. Idly, she entertained the possibility of using it to send Hemlock back to Einridge, or maybe Gerardo. I can't feel it, White Chocolate complained, and she turned around to see the mare trying to hand for herself. The straps were affixed to her hoof, the helmet was placed over her rump, and the hand seemed to be sporadically moving, but she was still staring at it in concern. I'm using it right, aren't I? I'm not thinking for it to move anyway, and when I do, it doesn't respond. Maybe it didn't get hooked up correctly? Shinespark rubbed her chin, floating the helmet off and checking White Chocolate's backside. Well, you don't have a cutie mark, so maybe it's not reading the signals correctly? I'd have to read Ambi's notes on how it works in person. Starlight doesn't have one, though, and she was able to use the Harmony Extractor just fine. Maple snorted. I'd hardly call what it did to her just fine. Point taken, Shinespark said, relenting. Maybe her foal is interfering somehow, Willow offered. Is that a possibility? Hmm. Shinespark closed her eyes and thought. You can never say something isn't a possibility in science, but I doubt it. Just a hunch, though. If anyone decided to finish this, I'm sure it won't be hard to get more mirrors to test that theory here in Riverfall. Amber turned slightly red, as did White Chocolate, who was unstrapping the hand with her teeth. Well, she stood up, shuffling her hose nervously. Do you mind if I try to make something with some of the spare parts here? I know about workshop rules and how not to leave messes. 
Shinespark nodded approvingly. This is a mess enough already that I'll have to give it a good cleaning. Shivo, see if you need anything. I'll be looking for more parts the ship needs. And try out that bed. White Chocolate wandered off to the workbench, and Shinespark strolled into a corridor between two shelf racks, her cast still clunking against the concrete ground. At some point, she must have fixed it, since Starlight couldn't imagine it surviving getting rained on the previous day. Well, girls, Willow asked, once it was just her, Maple, Amber, and Starlight. How are you doing? With what? Amber shrugged from her back and grinned. Free rise, weird technology, and everyone happy? Sound like a good day to me. Jam shards is lurking, Starlight pointed out, unable to see her or Valet. That makes me nervous. Amber nodded sagely, and Maple put a foreleg over Starlight, sliding so close that she was practically standing on top of the filly. Well, Willow repeated, sighing. There is something we should talk about sooner rather than later. At everyone's apprehensive gaze, she added, Not something bad, but when me and Starlight were at the ship yesterday... Arambai invited us back to Ironridge, as a group, if any of us wanted to go. He says it's safer now, and we can contact him with the soundstone Mitriona is keeping. But we need to decide what to do, and I'd like us to have more than one night to do that this time. She looked sorrowfully at Maple. He what? Valet surfaced beside him. Back to Ironridge? Yeah, no way. I just spent a billion years escaping from that place. Maple cringed. Willow... I don't know. That's why I don't want us to make a decision now, Willow murmured. Yeah, Amber whispered atop her back. Just think about it. Amber? Maple glanced up. What are you thinking? Amber bit her lip. You know, you're not going to like this, Maple, but I actually wouldn't mind going. I'm put out I couldn't be there for you last time, and if this could be like a victory lap... Maple hung her head and sighed. Just think about it, Willow insisted. Tonight, or maybe tomorrow night, we can all talk about it. And I'm not agreeing to go or stay before we talk to Ernby again, but I just wanted you girls to know now instead of the day before the ship flies. Starlight's heart sank. As bad as rushing into Ironridge had been for them, watching this was somehow worse. Now she knew she had to make a decision, whichever path they chose could end up terribly regretting, and couldn't even be over and done with the decision itself. The good thing about bad things in the past was that they were already over. Hey, Shinepark chirped, walking back out of the corridor with a spool of thick cable looped around her barrel and a box of spring-like dials in her aura. White Chocolate? How's it? Whoa, are you all right? Everyone jumped, spinning around to look. White Chocolate sat behind the work table, several parts arrayed before her, but she wasn't focused on it, eyes clenched and teeth gritted. Instantly, Willow set Amber down and was at her side, one hoof around her back. How are you? she whispered. Just a cramp, White Chocolate whispered back, and Starlight trotted far enough around the workbench to see that both of her forehooves were on her belly. It'll pass. Do you want me to walk you home? Willow asked, keeping her voice quiet. The room was suddenly perfectly still. I'll be fine, White Chocolate said, still clenching her teeth. It'll be fine. Willow nodded. Would you at least like to go sit upstairs? The couch is very softer. That might be nice, White Chocolate hissed. Starlight glanced around the room as Willow helped White Chocolate up, the latter walking gingerly for the staircase. Valet had vanished, Shinespark looked somewhat rattled, and Maple was completely ashen. Amber waved her over. Hey, Starlight, Amber asked, leaning against the stack of shelves. Do you mind walking Maple home? I think she needs it. Maple? Starlight frowned. Maple smirked regretfully, trembling, and reached out a hoof. Sorry, Starlight. I still have triggers to go off sometimes. I need some fresh air. Will you go with me? Sure, Starlight decided, not fully understanding what had happened, but definitely knowing when she was needed. Amber, you can get home without us? I've got valet, Amber said with a wink. She's here somewhere. I just hope Shinespark can carry everything back to the ship on her own. Shinespark shook her head, blinking. I'll make two trips if I need to. See you later. Starlight glanced around, but no one seemed to have any further reservations. Well... Okay. She moved to lift Maple on her back, swiftly remembered that her adoptive mother could still walk on her own, and settled for being a supportive shoulder to lean on, navigating the maze of shelves that led to the stairs out of the house. End of chapter 340